Good evening and welcome back to Bible study. This is our post Easter, post resurrection Sunday Bible study. We had a marvelous, marvelous time uh, in Resurrection Sunday uh, in person and online and uh, communing. And so we are back in Bible study, studying through the book of Romans to see what God's true intent for his church is, even in a contemporary culture. And I invite you to join me at Romans 11. In verse 7, uh, English Standard Version, as we go to God in prayer this evening. Would you do me a favor as you uh, are preparing to pray? Invite somebody. Uh, let them know the call-in number. Or if you're on YouTube, share that link to let them know that we are studying God's word. The more, the better. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day, for this opportunity to study your word once again. Lord, we have a desire to grow deeper in you and in the knowledge of your word. Because, Lord, we know that the more we know, the more we can grow. Spirit, I pray now that you will guide us through these scriptures. Lord, that you will open our eyes and our ears and our hearts and our minds to what you have for us this evening. or Whenever we're watching, Lord, that we may be the true church that you need us to be wherever we find ourselves, that men and women can be saved. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So last week, we we uh, started in Romans chapter 11, uh, the remnant of Israel. And we were talking about how uh, the Israelites, even, even uh, 2,000 and some odd years ago, they were not interested in other people people or other ethnicities uh, becoming a part of their church, particularly here in the city of Rome. And so the church at Rome, uh, Rome is just a, a spectacular place to live. And so there's uh, classes and there's uh, socioeconomics at play. There's a lot of things that are uh, causing this church uh, to not want to include the Gentiles or the lesser ethnicities, uh, we might say, uh, um, the, the, those who don't necessarily belong to social clubs or they're not a part of the social hierarchy. But Paul is saying, listen, Christ didn't die. And we just came out of Resurrection Sunday. We know that Christ died on the cross, was buried in the tomb and rose again on the third day. Why? So that all could be saved. He did not die on the cross just to save a select number of people. He did not die on the cross just so we could handpick who he should allow in. However, he died so that everyone could be saved. And that's good news, not just for everyone, right? But let's make it personal. That's good news even for ourselves because every person that's listening, every person that's watching, you need a savior. And if Christ had not died, we would not have had that opportunity to accept him as our personal savior. And so we ought to take delight. We ought to take joy. We ought to take a buoyance and exuberance in knowing that because Christ died, we have an opportunity to be saved. And that same uh, 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 outreach or that same outstretching of God's love, of God's salvation that was made available to each and every one of us, and that's why we're here in Bible study now, listening and reading along. It's because he saved us. That inclusion uh, that included us, it's still available to every man, woman, boy, and girl. All right. It's available to those uh, who, who are same gender loving. It's available to those who are transgender. It's available to those who are incarcerated. It's available to those who are no longer incarcerated. It's available to those who have done all types of illegal acts. It's available to those who don't uh, necessarily qualify, as we would say. There, there are people uh, that, that think that they can't come to church or they can't come to know God because they don't have certain clothing or they don't live in certain neighborhoods or they don't have certain uh, vehicles. But God doesn't. He That's not prerequisites for Christ. Uh, God says any man, woman, boy, or girl, regardless of where they come from or who they are, or regardless of what problems they're dealing with, what issues they're facing, what challenges they're trying to navigate, I'm available. And that's that's a that's good news in this post-resurrection Bible study, is that 
God, Christ, the Holy Spirit, uh, the triune God is available to everybody. And when you think about your own salvific journey, come on, so many of us can look back and say, you know what, there was a moment where I didn't think I deserved Christ. There was a moment where I doubted that he really loved me. You know, I was just sin sick. I was stuck in sin and I couldn't get out. But you know what? God's love lifted me. The hymn writer said, love lifted me. What did it lift you out of? It lift you out of that stuckness in sin. And that same Christ, that same spirit, that same God can do it for everybody else. He can do it for those family members you don't like. He can do it for your enemies. He can do it for your friends. He can do it for your neighbors. And yes, he can even save people that have been in church all their life and never really received the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. All right. And so he said we left off last week talking about the remnant. Right. We talked about how everybody won't get with the program. And that's the same issue that Paul was dealing with even in the city of Rome. He said, listen, if you're waiting for everybody to get on board, if you're waiting for everybody to catch the vision, if you're waiting for everybody to accept this new revelation knowledge that you've just received, that Christ is not just uh, exclusive or God is just not exclusive for the Jews and even for the Jews that uh, think that they uh, have a right to God only, he says everybody's not going to agree with that. Everyone is not going uh, to subscribe to that particular newsletter. But he says, listen, there's yet people. There are yet people that are ready to go forward. There are there's a remnant there that that and it ain't a whole lot. It ain't. I, I know there's millions and millions of people. It's not a whole lot of people that that are sitting in those seats that are participating that want to be a part of the next move of God. And then we're talking about Rome, not just Rome, but even in 2021, he said, everybody that's occupying the seat is not going to go with you, but you got to take what you have and make the church what God would have it to be. And so this evening, as we're going to the next verses, really the question should be, are you a part of the remnant? Are you the one that's in line with God's vision and God's mission uh, and God's mandate for the true church? Or are you fighting it uh, so that you can be comfortable and convenient? Are you a part of the remnant that says, you know what, God, at the end of the day, I just need you. I just want you. And I want to give that same uh, that same love and that same uh, attraction to somebody else. I want to draw somebody closer to you. Or are you that person that says, you know what, I got mine and, and everybody else is going to have to try to figure it out the best they can. Are you a part of the remnant that prays for people and intercedes on people's behalf? Or are you a part of the people that says, you know what, I'm, I, 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 it takes enough just to pray for myself. Listen, th what God needs, he needs a remnant in every location. He needs, he needs people in every church, in every city, in every county. He needs people in every state. He needs people in every country. And he said, I, and God said, I might not get everybody. We know that because some people are going to talk about that, just have a hard heart. But God says, listen, if I could just get a remnant, if I could just get a few people that will say, you know what, God, I want my personal life. I want my church. I want my community. I want my city to move forward under the spirit. I want my I want my church to grow in grace. I want I want my church God to explode with ministry and I want it to explode with healthy Christians and God whatever you have to do in me and with me to make sure that other people can get to you do that. Lord, whatever you have to do in my church, whatever you have to do in me individually, make me more loving, make me more caring, make me more forgiving. God, make me more understanding. God, make me more accepting so that men and women can be saved. But God did not establish his church through Peter so that we could be a social club of select Christians. But he saved us and he uh, pushed us out so that we could get other people to come into this saving knowledge of who Christ is. Let's go to verse seven. And I know I know you saying, well, I, man, I thought he was. No, no, no. We need to hear that. We really need to understand what God wants to do, especially in this post pandemic church. What is God trying to do? He's trying to move the he's trying to move the kingdom to a higher understanding of what his true intent really is. He didn't call us just to sit around and wait for him to call us home, but he has called us to be the true church where all can be saved. Listen to verse seven. So it says, what then? Question mark. It's a question. What then? Israel failed to obtain what it was seeking. They were looking for something and they didn't get it. And, 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 and partly because, hear this, partly because 
of, of the religion, the tradition, the customs that prevented them from receiving the fullness of who God is. There's nothing wrong with traditions. Hear me. There's nothing wrong with uh, customs. There's nothing wrong uh, with with things that have true meaning. But everything that we do and everything that we endeavor to do, it has to be bathed in prayer and it has to be found in the scripture. Otherwise, we're going to miss what we are looking for. You know, we talked about Sunday about uh, hidden in plain sight. And there's a lot of things that that we miss that are that are closer than we might think because we are uh, either looking in the wrong direction or our vision, our view of things is clouded, maybe by uh, a, a, a misunderstanding, maybe by a misconception, maybe by a perhaps a, 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 a lack really of knowledge rooted in scripture. And so he says, you're going to miss what you're looking for. Why? Uh, because you, you, you're allowing religion, you're allowing your misunderstandings, you're allowing your misinterpretations of scripture, of, of the Torah, the Old Testament. You're allowing that to cloud your judgment and to cloud the vision of what God's church really should be. And even today, you know, we have people that say, it, you, you know, the certain certain uh, 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 misconceptions or misunderstandings or misinterpretation of scripture causes people to think that their church is doing something that God is pleased with. But in fact, it goes, it is antithetical. It goes r rightly against what God's word really says. And listen, to, he says in verse seven, the elect obtained it. So, so there are people that actually caught it, right? There's people that caught the fact that that, that God was coming to save the world through Christ. He said there, there are people that got it. There, there are people there that that have uh have received this new revelation of Christ and and they have caught on to it. And he says, but the rest hardened their hearts. They, the rest of them were hardened. As it is written, and this is verse eight, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear down to this very day, down to this very day. So Paul is again pulling on Old Testament or the Torah. He's pulling that scripture and he's paralleling it with an experience that he's dealing with in the city of Rome. And so that's how I can say uh, uh, they, that, that religion was clouding because he's actually writing about a particular um, uh, narrative that happened thousands of years ago, even before he was writing, and the same experience is happening today. And so he's saying, "Listen, God gave them a spirit of stupid, and we don't want to we don't want to misunderstand what Paul is saying. And we know what, uh, even if you're reading in the Old Testament, uh, particularly you know Exodus." When the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, but but really we know under free will, God God will not force anything on you, right? So God will give you what you want. God gave them the spirit of stupor because they wanted it. God gave them eyes that would not see because that's what they wanted. He gave them ears that would not hear because that's what they wanted. And he says it's even going on to this very day. It's, it's not that God says, you know what? I don't want them to receive knowledge. I don't want them to receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. I don't want them to grow and mature in the things of God. But he says, you know what? That's what they want. So I'm going to give them what they want and they will reap the consequences of their own actions. And so we have to always listen. That's why our daily prayer should be, God, open my spirit to more of you. Open my eyes that I might see. Open my ears that I might hear. God, let me see you. Right. Because we're talking about Christ consciousness, you know, uh, uh, through our mission statement here at Kyle's Temple. You know, let me see you, God, in every situation. Let me see you, God, in every person. Let me see you, God, in every experience so that I don't become closed minded, so that I don't become confined to some box of limited thinking and understanding. But Lord, open my spirit. Because even as the world turns and as the world changes, God, I don't want to be stuck in what I thought was the, the, the totality of who you are. But God, show me through every situation, through every person, through every experience, even through my problems and my challenges and my issues. Show me, God, how you can get the glory and how you can use that to 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 show forth who you really are. All right. So let's go to verse nine. And then we're going to take questions. It says, and David says, 
let their table become a snare and a trap. So whatever you set, hear what David's saying. Whatever table you set, God, let that table that they've set, that, that table that they've put utensils of hate, they, they've, they've uh, prepared food of unforgiveness and rage and malice, all that stuff. Look, God, let the table that they set become a snare and a trap. Listen, right. Whatever whatever you put on the table, God, let because they're not doing it in the right heart, because they're not doing it with the right motives, because they're not doing it with the right intentions, Lord, let that table become a snare. Let that table become a trap. Let that table become a stumbling block and a retribution for them. Let's go on to verse 10. We'll stop. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see and bend their backs forever. Listen, this, these particular verses uh, uh, where, where God hardened Israel so that they could not see or hear, Paul is now praying for judgment over the Jews of, of his day who have rejected Christ. He's saying, listen, you all your life is short. Life is, you know, time is, is limited for every person. And while you have an opportunity and while you have a chance, please do not miss what God is doing. You do not want the train to leave the station and you're still standing uh, on the side waiting because you didn't believe that 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 train was the right train for you. He said, don't miss it. And so oftentimes people miss their biggest blessing uh, because they reject people. We miss our biggest blessing because we reject experiences that are challenging and that uh, cause us uh, some angst. We miss our biggest blessings oftentimes because, especially in, in our Christian walk, because we want God to do things and we want God to move in a way that we can understand and not realizing that his word literally says that his ways are past finding out. And so we have to open ourselves up, our spirit, our eyes, and our ears to receive the more of God. We have to open up our spirits, our minds, and our ears and our eyes to experience the greater of God, the bigger of God, the better of God, because God can only give you and I what our capacity can contain. And so if you can't handle uh, more of God, he's going to be able to give you what you can handle. All right, I want to stop right here and give you an opportunity for questions. If you're on YouTube, we would love to have those in the chat and I'll answer them. If you're on conference call, unmute yourself by pressing star six and we can ask those questions or you can uh, email me privately at K-T-A-M-E Zion Church at Comcast.net. And uh, I will certainly answer those questions for you. And also have a chance at the end. All right. One second. All right. So let's continue now because we're moving out of the remnant of Israel. And this particular uh, continuation of this chapter is now going into Gentiles grafted in. Right. All right. So whenever you're talking about something being grafted in, it's something uh, that that belongs right but it wasn't included and i'm not gonna get excited tonight but i just love that that word whenever you graph something in it was supposed it, it's supposed to be there but it was not originally included something had to happen that originally uh left it out but now you can re-enter that praise his name uh so that it can now be included verse 11 says so i ask did did they stumble in order that they might fall. And listen to what he says, by no means. Uh-uh. No, they didn't stumble so that they might fall, but rather they they stumbled, watch this, through their trespass. Salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make Israel jealous. So this particular uh this particular uh grouping of scripture that we're going through is going to be dealing about God saving righteousness uh, featured through the salvation of Israel at the end of history and his saving plan for both the Jews and the Gentiles. Watch this. Israel's hardening is not the final word. God planned salvation history so that Israel's trespass would be open salvation for the Gentiles. And the Jews, in turn, would be provoked to jealousy when they see Gentiles being saved and enjoying a relationship with God. So they're stumbled because, again, we just talked about just a few chapters before uh, that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And oftentimes we think that that just means those people 
that were already saved, but we can identify here that God also will use uh, things, all things work together for those even that are unsaved so that they can be saved. And we see that in this uh, being elucidated in this particular scripture, because he's saying the, the, Gent the, the Jews, excuse me, the Jews, they stumbled not just not so they could fall, but they stumbled so that the door of salvation could be open so that it would then make them jealous and 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 cause them hopefully to have to want what the Gentiles are now receiving. You stumbled in your revelation. You stumbled in your acceptance. You stumbled in your acknowledgement. But prayerfully and hopefully, my Lord, you will see that the Gentiles are living the good life through Jesus Christ. And you'll say, I want that. Right. And this jealousy is not it's not that 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 demonic, sinful jealousy. But it's, it's that it's that I it's that yearning for for an experience of another. It's that I want to be able to pray like that. I want to be able to love God like that. I want to be able to praise God like that. I want to be able to experience God in the way that so-and-so is experiencing. And here it was the Gentiles. And so God is saying, hopefully that they're stumbling and, and, and me uh, uh, using that stumble to save will, will draw the Israel, the Israelites back closer to me. Let's go to verse 12. Now, if their trespass means riches for the world, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean right the he's talking about this full inclusion is a is talking about uh the fulfillment of god's saving promise to ethnic israel he's and paul argues here from the lesser to the greater so he's going from the gentiles up to the jews and Egypt, even until the ethnic uh israelites if israel's sin brought salvation to the gentiles then the blessing will be even greater when all Israel is be, will be saved. Can you imagine? Because the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. Can you imagine what would happen if we as the believers of Jesus Christ, if we as those who, uh, as those who have been called, those who have been saved, those who have been sanctified, cleansed from the inside out, those of us who have been anointed, if we would get in the, the full inclusion of God and in full obedience with God's word, what God could do with that particular person and with that particular body of which that person is a part of. If we all came together and said, you know what, no more limitations, no, no more backwards thinking, no more being stuck, no more being judgmental, no more being hateful, no more being uh, 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 looking down on other people, no more ostracism. We're not doing that. You know what? This church, we're going to be the true church. We, we, we might be the only church in this town or this county or this state, but we're going to be the true church and we're going to be inclusive and loving and we're going to acknowledge people and respect people and bring them to a higher level of dignity. We're going to show them the love of Christ. Can you imagine if we, if, if God can do through the church what he's doing now and what he was doing then with people that that did not 100 percent get in line with god's word and with god's true intent for his church imagine then and even now what god could do with a man or a woman and a church that is in full alignment with his word and with the true intent of what his church was created to be you we would truly be unstoppable we we would you wouldn't be able to contain there would be no buildings there would be no park no field no arena no stadium that could hold the people that would want to come and experience that kind of god and, and you know god he can't even inhabit a place that that's not in full obedience with his word and so paul is saying listen could you imagine what what, what could happen to the world could you imagine what even could happen to your church, what could happen to the people around your church, what could happen to your community if you got in with the full inclusion of the love of Christ and, and not and not beat people down and not mistreat people and not and not acknowledge people and not give people their dignity and, and not judging people off of the color of their skin or judging people off of how much money they have or they don't have or judging people off of their lack of education or judging people because, you know, they don't work where you've worked or they don't drive what you drive, but just loving people because they're human. Could you imagine what God would do in that type of 
of environment. If God can move in an environment that's not 100 percent in line with his word. Right. And he does that through grace. That oh, I'm not excusing that. I'm not telling you what well, we're doing just fine with, with the hellions we got. No, if we got all of us filled with the Holy Ghost. And I mean it to a place where we're interceding and praying for a move of God like never before. And we and we say, you know what, God, whoever you send, we don't care. But Lord, I want you to 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 be able to freely move in that space. God, I mean, it, it would blow your mind what God would do in your personal life and in the life of the church that you're a part of, you know, we were in church for even somebody came off the street and they were just came in here and just shouting. Now, it didn't bother me because I know, you know what, I, this whole pandemic, I've been praying, Lord, I don't want to go back to that. church. I don't want to go back to that church. I don't want to go back to that church. I want to go back to your church. I don't want to go back to Kyle's Temple. I want to go back to the church that you intended for Oak Park in Sacramento in 2021. I don't want to go back to just burgundy pews and seats and music. I, I, I want to go back to the church, God, where people feel compelled to come off the street and God's going to answer. he's answering that prayer even now I, and it doesn't make me uncomfortable I kept on preaching kept on moving along because I know what God wants for his church I know what he wants how do I know that because I've read his word and when you know what God wants for his church and what he wants out of a life and what he wants out of your life and what he wants out of my life and we say you know what God yes Lord you know we, we don't say that often we need to get back I mean we, we need to get back to praying yes Lord and stop asking God for the, all of this stuff that we don't need you don't need no more shirts, socks, shoes. You don't need no more money, another vacation. Mm -mm. What we need is to give God a complete yes. And when we give God an absolutely complete yes, both individually and collectively, I'm telling you, God will blow our minds. And I still believe that God wants to blow our minds in 2021 and beyond. I am not. I, I was so loving. I love the church of the 90s love the church of the new millennium, but I believe that what God wants to do in 2021 and beyond, it won't, he wants to absolutely blow the mind of the believer. He wants to blow the minds of churches. He wants to grow and increase them, but he cannot do it in an environment that is not productive and that is not fertile and that is not inclusive and that is not engaging and that is not relevant. He, he can't, he cannot do in, in that environment what he needs unless the people there are, are prepared for what he wants to do. I don't care how many seeds you throw out. You can throw seeds all day long on pavement. The, the pavement is not the, an environment for growth. Pavement is meant to be walked on. Pavement is meant to be driven on. But in order, in order for that seed to grow and to be planted and to be rooted, it has to be watered, but it also has to be planted in fertile soil. And God, God is not going to send people. I say this, you know, God would never send he will never send a lamb to a slaughterhouse. That's not his intention for people to go into an environment where they're beaten down and beaten up and looked down on and, and treated uh, worse than they were in the world. No, he's going to send people to the soil that is fertile, that can help people grow and cultivate and become the person that he wants them to be so that their light can shine in an environment or in a place that we will never go. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Somebody type, yes, Lord. Somebody say, you need to open your mouth right now. I'm thinking I'm going to finish right here. But we need to open our mouths and say, yes, Lord, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, for my life. Yes, Lord, for my church. Yes, Lord, for my community. Yes, Lord, for my city. Yes, Lord, to the calling on my life. Yes, Lord, to, to the assignment that you have given me. Some, some of us are not working in our kingdom assignment because we want something greater. But you are. We, we, we've got to get to a place of yes, Lord. We have to get to a place where you say, God, you know what? Not my will, but thy will be done. Use me for your service. Use me, God, in your grace to, to, to bring men and women to Christ. God, God, yes, Lord, for my church. Lord, don't let my church die and be sold and, and like other churches are in this area. God, let my church be a beacon light that shines in the midst of darkness. God, God, die. and it's not about money. It's not because God knows how to provide for those churches. He knows how to provide for an environment that is fertile. It's not about money, but Lord, make my church vibrant so that we don't die on the vine and and it comes through our yes 
It comes through our obedience. It comes through our understanding of who God is and what God wants for his church today and for the future. Not for what God wanted his church last year or last month. Not even what God wanted his church pre-pandemic. Because the church that we're going back to is not going to be the church that we left. It's a totally new place. It's a totally new environment. God is, he's pushed everybody out of these buildings to work on themselves so that when he reintroduces us to the building, we're coming not only in as new selves, but we're coming into a new church. And so our answer and our response to God ought to be yes. Let's pray. And listen, our prayer very is very simple tonight. Dear God, yes, Lord, to your will and to your way individually and collectively. Yes, Lord, we will trust you and obey. We will be an inclusive body. We will be a relevant body. We will be an engaging body. We will be a Holy Ghost filled body. We will be, oh God, a body that loves and cares and reaches your people and, and does not ostracize, does not, God, rebuke, does not, oh God, turn away anybody in, 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 in hatred or, or in jealousy or in rage or any of that. But Lord, whoever you send, God, we, our hearts and our minds are receptive because God, we give you our full yes this evening and we thank you for it in Jesus name. Do it, Lord, for today and for the future. Amen. Amen. We're going to pick up next week at verse 13. I invite you to join us now for our prayer meeting. I check in uh, uh, this evening. If you have prayer requests, you can put them in the chat here or you can certainly uh, uh, come on our prayer line and unmute yourself. And we would love to pray with you. Connect our faith to yours, believing that God can do even the impossible. The number once again is one six six nine nine zero zero nine one two eight, an access code access code of six nine one one six one zero eight eight seven, and a passcode of one two three four. I, I pray that you will join us now on our prayer call. If not, we hope to see you on Sunday morning for worship, and of course next Tuesday for Bible study. Listen, we have to break down these walls that we have and give God a yes so that our lives can grow and so that our church can grow. And the people of God said, amen.